You're watching West Dakota Fox News at 9 with Anna Schleisman and meteorologist Henry Blakes. Your first news of the night starts right now on West Dakota Fox News at 9. Well, there's some severe weather making its way through the Midwest, so we'll go right to Henry, who has the latest. Henry? Yeah, most of, some of that is going to impact some of our viewers in the first warm viewing area, mainly to the south and the southeast, but South Dakota and Nebraska really getting hammered. In the warm sector of this storm, there's a severe thunderstorm watch extending into Omaha, into northern Kansas. But looking at South Dakota, lots of snow, blizzard conditions, and wind from east of Rapid City and all the way into the Sioux Falls area. So there's no escaping this storm for many South Dakota residents. Close to home, we're starting to see some returns near the North and South Dakota state line, but eventually that moisture will make its way a little farther to the North and East, impacting the Southern James and Red River Valleys, where you remain under winter storm warnings and blizzard warnings to the South and East. Kidder County, winter weather advisory, but notice Jamestown and the Sioux County points on South and East that's where you have that winter storm warning. I'll have more details on that coming up later on as far as the snow total and forecast, but it looks like traveling is going to be a problem. Once again, unfortunately, residents in Ashley and surrounding areas, this could be a similar storm to the previous storm. You just keep getting hit over and over again, but more details on that coming up later on. Thanks, Henry. Well, RJR Maintenance and Management is open for business today after closing yesterday to mourn and honor the lives of the four victims in last week's quadruple homicide. Robert Fockler, Adam Fuhrer, and Bill and Lois Cobb all worked at RJR. Fockler's wife, Jackie, says they opened the business seven years ago, and since then it's grown tremendously. And to keep the momentum, she needs the right people. I believe every single individual I have here are the right people. They're all amazing, and they've proven it over and over this last week. Fockler says they've all stepped up. She also thanked the police, first responders, and law enforcement that have been working diligently on this case. Well, not that it's for sale, but Bismarck is becoming more valuable. The city's real estate is $160 million more valuable this year than it was in 2018. That's according to the financial department. John Selling found out what's led to this increase. New construction plays a significant role in Bismarck's economic growth. The value of the city has increased by about 2% every year for the last few years. There's been growth to the community um, with properties being annexed and new structures being built. One developer, Jamie Schmidt, says that they did see a little bit of a slowdown last year. He says they typically build about 50 new houses a year and last year only built 30. We were in kind of a lull, I would say, you know, fall, winter months of, um, you know, 18 was kind of, we started to see a little bit of a lull in the market, it seemed like. But I feel like, um, honestly, even February, March, we started to see, you know, we saw, you know, started to see some good activity. And, um, you know, it's leading me to believe it's going to be a busy year. A report given before the Board of Equalization said the city is valued at more than $8.3 billion. Bismarck, I'm John Salling for your news leader. Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa Chairman Jamie Azure spoke on voter suppression at a national summit in Austin, Texas today. Azure spoke on how the lack of mailing addresses on Native American reservations caused issues during November's midterms election, whether it was intentional or not. It was a suppression on our people, but not only Native Americans, not only the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa and the five United Tribes of North Dakota, but the rural areas the farmers, the uh, college students, the, um, the college students that are in dorms, they don't have a physical address. It goes right to the building. So you're, you're, the trickle-down effect is you're affecting so many other people, even though the large percentage was Native American. The three-day summit wrapped up today. Well, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe BIA law enforcement is looking for a missing girl from Fort Yates. According to SRST's Facebook page, seven-year-old Anella Pristine Gipp was with her non-custodial father, Charles Gipp, and was not returned home on April 6th. Authorities believe she's in the Bismarck or Mandan area. If you have any information, contact SRST at 701-854-7242. Well, two medical marijuana bills are moving out of conference committee. One bill will allow for cancer patients to have enhanced amounts. The other expands the list of conditions qualifying for treatment, but it will not include opioid use disorder and withdrawal.
It's one of those ones where we, we keep monitoring and hopefully they'll, they'll keep um, working on some studies in, uh, while we're in the interim and, and we can uh, revisit this next session. Both of the bills were recommended for passage. And the legislature has killed all but one of the charitable gaming bills. They're trying to find a compromise to change the taxes on e-poll tab machines and get more money to the charities. Mandan Senator Dwight Cook wants to make sure charities will benefit, while Bismarck Representative Jason Doctor says the state's tax has enough to regulate the program and more. Both sides seem to agree to study whether things like sports betting have a place in the state. And Governor Doug Burgum vetoed a bill that would have given power to the legislature's budget section over spending decisions, calling it an unconstitutional practice. In his veto message, he says it disregards a previous Supreme Court ruling. And instead of trying to properly balance authority between the branches of government, it makes the problem worse. Burgum urges legislators to reject the bill. Last night's bond vote for building projects in the Williston School District to handle overcrowding narrowly failed, and administrators say they're now in crisis mode. They say their remaining options are staggering student schedules, having half-day kindergarten and holding elementary classes in lunchrooms. Earlier in the summer, I was uh, contacted by one of our churches who offered their space to house kindergarten students. Uh, we're going to have to put everything on the table and we're going to have to really start thinking creatively about how we're going to uh, maximize every resource and all the space we have in the district to best serve our students. Well, yesterday we told you how a state audit showed the city of Washburn had potentially used illegal accounting practices. Today, on behalf of the city commission, the auditor says after the previous auditor and deputy auditor resigned last year, the city hired a consulting firm and is making changes in order to comply with North Dakota's Century Code. Well, Bismarck and Mandan residents may notice an odor or taste of chlorine in their water. Water treatment plant supervisors say that's normal. Jordan Verdadero tells us why. This is what water looks like when it's taken right out of the Missouri River. Then it goes through processes to make it safe to drink. Along the Missouri River here, everything is pretty much lime softening and your, you know, your pH adjustments, your chlorination. Kershaw says it's normal for people to smell a bit of chlorine in the water at this time of year. With no chlorine in the water, you'll end up with, you could end up with cholera, typhoid, you know, there's things that are out there. E. coli is the big thing. That's why chlorine is added as a disinfectant to the water to eliminate all those waterborne diseases. Kershaw says runoff doesn't affect Bismarck since it has a horizontal collector wall. It filters water under the bed of the river, whereas Mandan uses water from the top of the river. During the spring runoff time, we can get some of the difference in taste and odor, and uh, it should be passing. It should already have been passed through the system. Both Freeze and Kershaw say in order to get the lingering chlorine smell or taste out of the water, let the tap run a little longer. In Bismarck, I'm Jordan Verdadero reporting for your news leader. Kershaw says smaller towns who use wells tend to just chlorinate their water, but every town differs depending on the size of their plant and their EPA standards. A woman who reported a fraudulent Facebook page in her name has now been arrested for fraud herself. 33-year-old Kristen Keel is accused of creating a make-a-wish contract that the organization did not have. It looked to build a new playground in Donnybrook in the name of a sick child, specifying the current equipment could not be sold for profit. Keel proposed that the park board, of which she is a member, donate the equipment. Members were alerted of this scam and have not followed through with the donations. And two dozen people are facing federal charges in a $1.2 billion Medicare scheme. The Justice Department says doctors offered unnecessary orthopedic braces to patients, telling them all costs were covered by Medicare, which then reimbursed the medical equipment companies and paid out kickbacks to the patients. In the meantime, the Department of Health and Human Services is taking action against 130 medical equipment companies accused of overbilling Medicare nearly $2 billion. Well, 2020 presidential candidate Senator Bernie Sanders introduced a new Medicare for All plan in an effort to eliminate private health insurance. Sanders believes health care is a right, not a privilege, and that Americans should be able to afford the prescription drugs they need. The American people are increasingly clear. They want a health care system which will lower health care costs and save them money. Supporters hope it will also lower the number of uninsured people. Sanders says they will deliver. 
Well, Senator Kevin Kramer calls the Medicare for All plan a socialist takeover. He says it would bankrupt the U.S. and make hundreds of millions of Americans' health care plans obsolete. He supports changes, just not these, which is why he's co-sponsoring the PROTECT Act, which was introduced to the Senate today. It looks to ensure health coverage is available to Americans with existing conditions, preventing health insurance companies from denying coverage or increasing premiums. And the legal battle over the Affordable Care Act will play out this summer. A federal appeals court will hear arguments in early July. The move comes after a lower court judge in Texas struck down the entire law in December, ruling the individual mandate in it is unconstitutional. But a coalition of 17 Democratic attorneys general later filed an appeal, which sent the case to the Fifth Circuit Court. No matter the outcome, the case is still expected to end up in front of the Supreme Court. My daughter didn't grow up with a grandma. That was Darcy Ellison, a South Dakota native who lost her mother-in-law and sister-in-law to lung cancer. Now she's in D.C. with other advocates to tell lawmakers her story and encourage them to include lung cancer research funding in the 2020 budget. And an American Lung Association official is right there with her. Keep increasing that. It really increases what we can do with um, with research and, and progression of how we're treating lung cancer. South Dakota Congressman Dusty Johnson said Ellison is making a difference for the more than 200,000 Americans who are diagnosed with lung cancer every year. Well, up next, contractors hit a gas line and the result was explosive and deadly. And it looks like conditions are going to be pretty bad well south of the Bismarck Mandan area, especially in South Dakota with near blizzard conditions. Your forecast and more next. A gas explosion in downtown Durham, North Carolina left one person dead and 15 injured. A contractor hit a gas line causing a leak this morning. Firefighters were on scene and evacuations underway when the explosion occurred, demolishing one building and damaging four others. Six people are in critical condition, including one fireman. Well, in an effort to reduce flaring in North Dakota, a natural gas pipeline under Lake Sakakawea, about 20 miles southeast of Williston, has been proposed. This infrastructure would allow 130 to 240 million cubic feet per day of natural gas to be captured and transported for processing and distribution. The Army Corps of Engineers released a draft of the environmental report on its website and is asking for public comment. And the North Dakota Stockmen's Association and Foundation are helping Nebraska ranchers who are suffering after the historic floods. They're pledging $10,000 of their own to kickstart the Nebraska in Need Disaster Relief Program. They want their cattle ranching neighbors to know North Dakota is here for them. If you want to help, send donations by check to NDSF with Nebraska in Need in the memo. Senator Hoven announced today that USDA Secretary Sonny Perdue approved a bipartisan request to issue livestock disaster payments after much of the severe weather in the Midwest caused devastating livestock losses. Approval will be delegated to Farm Service Agency County Committees as they're most familiar with the events and practices of their area farmers and ranchers. Senator Hoven also announced FEMA has approved Ward County's plan to protect residential and community infrastructure around Rice Lake from the threat of flooding and erosion. County officials are trying to acquire and demolish a home so they can build up the lot to prevent high lake levels from spilling over. The quick response from FEMA helps them do this without risking its federal funding. One area that is in desperate need of funding and hasn't been getting it so far, the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. March's winter storm damaged more than 75 structures, displaced 1,500 people, and caused millions of dollars of infrastructure damage. Pine Ridge President Julian Bear Runner has been trying and failing to get the federal assistance. With another storm already raging, Bear Runner started a petition to President Trump for a disaster declaration and is hoping for more signatures. And the North Dakota Department of Transportation is working on a pilot program to utilize drones to monitor flood conditions. It's partnering with the Northern Plains UAS test site, Botlink, Ease Drones, and UND Aerospace, as well as city and county officials to get aerial assessments of flooding and infrastructure damage. The hope is to use the information to increase response time and improve future response efforts. They're currently testing around Grand Forks and Fargo. Why are the Flood threats even higher after this storm, Henry. Yeah, they could be dealing with some problems, unfortunately, with the amount of snow coming down and the melt. That's something we are going to be watching. But 
for the time being, no, notice that there are plenty of advisories out there across the viewing across the viewing area. We are talking about anywhere from blizzard warnings and winter storm warnings across much of the first warm viewing area. As far as things are concerned, we are talking about blizzard conditions for much of South Dakota, and that will extend with even near blizzard conditions across um, portions of southeastern North Dakota. So for the time being, let's go in and zoom in closer. Residents in Corson, Campbell County in South Dakota, uh, Sioux, Emmons, Logan, McIntosh, and Stutzman County winter storm warnings, Kidder County winter weather advisory, but we do have blizzard warnings for the Aberdeen area and into Mobridge. Closures, I-29 in South Dakota from the North Dakota border to Brookings is closed and I-90 in South Dakota from Ellsworth into Sioux Falls is also closed due to the snow and blizzard conditions. Much of South Dakota getting in on this from Rapid City into Aberdeen, Pierce, surrounding areas. There is no escape, but close to home starting to get some returns near the North and South Dakota state line. Unfortunately, residents in Ashley, Logan, and McIntosh County, this is going to be a similar storm to the last one where the southeastern region is going to get the brunt of this storm. Well, as far as the first one viewing area is concerned, but notice South Dakota, lots of residents in Nebraska, the potential for 10 inches or maybe even a foot or more of snow. And that also extends, like I said, unfortunately, parts of far south central into southeastern North Dakota, including Fargo and especially the Wapaton area. As I mentioned, Ashley, Edgley, you will likely be getting anywhere from potentially eight inches or more of snow. Highs today, a bit chilly due to the clouds and the wind. We were only in the 30s. Now we're down into the upper 20s. That wind, thankfully, out of the northeast, anywhere between 10 to 15 miles per hour. So for right now, the wind isn't bad, but we could be talking about near blizzard conditions once again across far southeastern North Dakota and already occurring in South Dakota. Here's your weather motion. Don't want to forget about our viewers to the north and the west. You are pretty much spared. Minot, Wilson, Dickinson, Hedinger, Montana. Um, no threat due to dry air from this storm, so you are good. But still tomorrow, we're talking about the clouds continuing, but maybe a bit of sunshine trying to break out from Montana and the far west. Otherwise, notice travel going to be a bit difficult across the southern James and Red River valleys. And we will be talking about the chance of some rain and snow showers potentially for the Bismarck Mandan area, but we're kind of on that border of the um, of the accumulating snow for the forecast. But the thing is, anything that does come down across the Capital City region is not really going to stick with that wet snow. But for tonight, we're talking about temperatures mostly in the low to mid 20s tomorrow, mid to upper 30s, low 40s across the north because, well, you're not going to be having the precipitation. And as the sunshine starts to come out across the west, things will look better for you. But hey, once we get past Friday, things are going to be looking good in time for your weekend. A bit cool in the 40s, but it's still going to be nice for outdoor weather. Thanks, Henry. Well, while they were looking for collusion, were they spying on the president's campaign? We'll explain next. The chief law enforcement officer of our country is going off the rails. I believe that he's qualified to do his job. Democrats have conflicting reviews after Attorney General William Barr testified before the Senate today. Barr told the panel he's reviewing whether federal authorities improperly spied on the Trump campaign while looking for possible ties with Russia and plans to examine the genesis and conduct of the FBI's investigation. Well, let me... But the uh, question is whether it was predicated, adequately predicated, and I'm not suggesting it wasn't adequately predicated, but I'd need to explore that. Mueller's report concluded there was no collusion with Russia. Barr told lawmakers he hopes to re release a redacted version of the report next week. WikiLeaks editor-in-chief says they uncovered an extensive spying operation against Julian Assange in the Ecuadorian embassy in London, where he has lived under asylum since 2012. He said surveillance included video and audio recordings from various recorders inside the embassy, including footage of a medical examination of Assange as well as legal meetings. He added that there has been an escalating effort to push Assange out of the embassy with the aim of getting getting him extradited to the United States. Well, the Catholic Diocese of Fargo says it has placed a priest on administrative leave during an investigation into allegations about his conduct with children. Father Wenceslas Katanga is a, serves churches in Wishick.
Zealand and Ashley. Bishop John Folda told parishioners that his office is fully cooperating with law enforcement. The diocese says it's conducting internal investigation while Fargo police conduct a criminal investigation. A diocese spokesperson says Father Katanga has not been charged with wrongdoing. Well, this strange burglary attempt was caught on camera, showing a man squeezing through a homeowner's doggy door in Oregon. The camera has already seen him, but he still covers it up as soon as he's inside. He reportedly stole electronics and jewelry. Police are still looking for the culprit. Kids get a chance to visit the zoo from their hospital beds. Next. Post captioning. A zoo in Poland is using a robot named Leos to live stream animals so sick kids can see them while they're in the hospital. Leos was invented by a man whose son was confined to a hospital bed after a genetic disorder di diagnosis. Psychologists at the hospital say this helps the children deal with the inconvenience and boredom of being stuck in bed. Well, Henry, let's see the storm one more time. Yeah, the viewers across the north and the far west will be spared, but the south, central, and southeast will be getting some activity. But your morning commute, not looking at problems for Bismarck Mandan area, but south and east of town, yes, most definitely, unfortunately. Rain and snow chances will be in the forecast for Bismarck Mandan area, especially during the second half of your day. Otherwise, it will be breezy into Friday. Otherwise, the weekend, look forward to it. It's looking great, but South Dakota, southeastern North Dakota. That's where the problem spots are going to be starting tonight. All right. Well, be careful out there and we'll see you tomorrow night.